Welcome to Money in Tech. I'm Jared Kenna. Tonight we're here with Will O'Brien, founder and CEO of BitGo, and Mike Belshi, founder and CTO. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thanks, Jared. Hello. So what exactly is BitGo? So BitGo is a Bitcoin services company. We are a venture-backed startup based in the Bay Area, and we've built a foundational technology called multi-signature. Uh, technology, multi-signature wallets that we're using to create a variety of businesses, uh, services for both businesses and consumers. Um, Mike is the uh, co-founder CTO. He built this technology uh, really out of the need for his own funds and the funds of you know the folks in, in our network. And now we're actually building that into a company. It's really exciting. All right. So, like, what kind of company would want to use a multi-signature wallet? What are they avoiding here? What's the uh... What's the benefits? So when you when you look at the Bitcoin ecosystem today and you read the news, every week there's a story about uh, some kind of theft or loss, right? Uh, some exchange lost all its private keys and the money's gone. Uh, somebody forgot their password and they can't access their money. And the problem here is that all of the Bitcoin addresses to date are using a single private key. So if you get that private key, you can steal somebody's money. So the technology we've built, uh, that Mike has built, and that we're, we're productizing into, into a broad services company, uh, you, the way that BitGo works is we issue three keys, and you need two of those keys in order to unlock funds. So think of it like um, co-signing at a bank. You need two signatures by the principles of a company, or missile, nuclear missile keys. You need two <laughs> keys at the same time. We think that Bitcoin is money, and since it is money, it's really important to protect it. Uh, so who can use it? Consumers can use it who are making investments in Bitcoin. Merchants can use it who are accepting Bitcoin as payments and want to store funds in their own accounts. Um, and financial services companies can use it if they're building out a hedge fund or a trading platform around Bitcoin. Great. Mike, I'm kind of curious, why did you originally start building this? You just saw it as a, a need in Bitcoin or you want to make a lot of money off it? What was your uh, initial plan here? Well, like a lot of people, I just kind of got excited about Bitcoin. I caught the Bitcoin bug, you might say. And uh, I started just you know, reading everything I could. Then I suddenly had bought some. And then suddenly that turned into some real money. And then I helped other people buy Bitcoin and store it. And at the time, the solutions that we had weren't very good. And my background is in crypto. Uh, I was one of the early guys on the Google Chrome team. You know, spent a lot of time trying to make a secure browser. But as part of that, I observed that every machine on the internet, you can kind of assume is hacked. Um, so we know that like 30% of home computers have malware on them. We know that there's over 6 million you know, viruses, phishing attacks, and various other types of bad stuff that's getting out and being unleashed new stuff every year. Um, so I was afraid of putting things on my own computer, like with any of the client software. And then, of course, on the server side, there's a lot of attacks going on too. So really building BitGo was kind of research and just passion, getting excited about like how can we secure this better? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm completely bullish about what the potential Bitcoin has for the future, um, but we are just in its infancy of figuring out the security side of it. And the 203 wallet kind of came out by learning about P2SH and some of the newer technologies of Bitcoin. Um, and just trying to make it a better place. Do you anticipate um, a lot of uh, retail users, home users using this as well, or do you mostly, um, mostly institutions? You know, with Bitcoin's a lot like cash. So as a, as a regular person, you don't really think about storing you know, your, all of your savings in cash. It's actually kind of frightening. So um, is this something you think that can really help people be more comfortable with Bitcoin? Well, I, I think Bitcoin is a good analogy to cash today or gold um, because of the extent to which it's been used so far. That it is basically paying with cash, but having a record of that. But Bitcoin has such expansive possibilities. Uh, it can be used for escrow services. It can be used to redefine industries like real estate. It can be used to host smart contracts in the blockchain. And so as you get further and further up that value chain of what you're doing with Bitcoin, everybody is going to need secure core infrastructure. So I think in 2013, we saw a lot of transformational events. We saw the takedown of Silk Road. We saw a growth of entrepreneurs in the first major funding events in the Bitcoin ecosystem. We saw the volume in China uh, and subsequent the actions that happened on the regulatory side in China. We saw the Senate hearings in the US. And so that created a massive awareness around Bitcoin, but the, the use of it was pretty limited. It's put dollars in, get Bitcoin, maybe you can spend it at a few merchants. In 2014, I think we're going to see a number of companies coming to market with core infrastructure that can compete heavily with the credit system, uh, debit systems, with just general other types of transaction processing, as well as all the other financial infrastructure. You know, if you look at financial services and financial infrastructure, it hasn't really innovated over the last 60 years. So we could see all the innovation taking place in the next 18 months. It's really exciting. 
That was definitely very exciting. So, Will, um, you're an attorney, correct? No, I just no. play one on TV. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> no, my background is in computer science. I uh, studied at uh, Harvard in computer science, and then I used to build real-time trading systems for financial service companies. I went back to business school at MIT, and then I've been working in the early stage ecosystem in combination of payments companies, video game publishers, and other areas. I joined Mike and, and our investment team um, at the end of 2013 to come on board as CEO. Excellent, excellent. And uh, how are you involved with uh, on Bitcoin and on 3D printing? So, you know, I got interested in 3D printing a few years ago and then Bitcoin about a year and a half ago. And I was looking at this as both an angel investor and an entrepreneur. And I said, where could I get involved in these spaces? And I decided to take um, a different tack than just starting a company or doing a four-hour work week type of company. I said, let me get involved by building a media play where I can become an expert in this field and I can also kind of give back to the entrepreneurial ecosystem. So I launched two properties. One was called on3dprinting.com, one was called onbitcoin.com. And I started sourcing a lot of content from entrepreneurs and companies in the space um, to give them a voice, to get them exposure when they were launching new products, new services. And it helped me immensely understand what's happening in the space, where, where there might be a good opportunity to invest as an angel investor or get involved as an operator. Uh, and ultimately, um, I looked at the markets. Bitcoin is a rocket ship. It is growing incredibly. It's going to just uh, beat any other. It's like the dawn of the internet. We're going to see such amazing value created in the next few years. 3D printing is an exciting technology for the next 25 to 50 years. Um, but Bitcoin is here and now. And the, the company that I came across um, through uh, an investor friend of mine is BitGo. And I just was said, this is the company that's going to be able to really capitalize on the opportunity within Bitcoin and help grow the ecosystem at the same time. So the media companies helped me understand the space, but now I'm fully dedicated to operating BitGo. Excellent. Do you have any thoughts to expand into uh, other cryptocurrencies or altcoins such as Litecoin or possibly Ripple? I think we want to be where the demand is. If consumers want altcoins, um, we'll be there. If businesses want altcoins, we'll be there because we really see ourselves as a service, services company. And Mike, I'd let you add anything you, th you think on, on altcoins. Or... Well, it's certainly an evolving world. So it could well be that you know, somebody comes along with a, a better cryptocurrency than, than Bitcoin. Um, I think Bitcoin has innovated on some of the key things that we hadn't yet solved, particularly around you know, how, do you, uh, how do you deal with double spends. Um, those things are going to be common probably in the next couple of generations of crypto coins. And, and of course, we're going to be able to support those too. Now, from a technical perspective, it's fairly easy to add altcoins such as Litecoins, correct? Yeah, I um, mean, the guy that created Litecoin, I mean, he'll tell you, it took him four hours to create the thing, right? So it's, <laughs> it's a pretty good return. And, and that's not that different yeah. than Bitcoin. So how have other people reacted when you, uh, when you talk about Bitcoin? I mean, I got involved in 2009, and everyone just looked at me and laughed. And of course, now they say that they really believed me. They just didn't get behind it. Um, but, you know, I'm curious about your experiences over the last few years and how it's changed. Yeah, Mike, why don't you, you've been in a bit longer than I have. Why don't you talk about well, it? Well, I don't know. History will, will tell the, the tale in the end. Either we're going to all be you know, cre complete fools or we're all going to be complete <laughs> geniuses. Um, I like to think the latter is more likely. Uh, I think there's a lot of really smart people that have come into the space. And so whether you're looking across you know, at Andreessen Horowitz with their recent investments, if you're looking at Chinese investments or you know, BitGo or whatnot, there's, there's a lot of people working to make this work. Um, the fact is, is that financial, uh, the financial systems of America have not changed. Um, in quite a long time, and people are looking for better solutions, right? So whether it's the credit side, whether it's transferring money around the globe, uh, there's some real value that Bitcoin brings, and I think the smart people that are behind it will make it work. Yeah, and I, I would just add, I think the, uh, 2013 was a transformational year where skeptics turned to interested parties. So, you know, people who were telling us in our network who were saying, you're crazy, why are you putting money into Bitcoin a year ago, are now saying, how do I buy Bitcoin? What do I do, right? And and that's just that's just stemming that's just demonstrating a wave of credibility and um, that there is really an undercurrent of investment, both people investing in the currency and people who are investing in businesses in and around the currency. I actually uh, personal story at Thanksgiving, I hosted my extended family and they demanded that I spend a two-hour session describing Bitcoin 101 to them. So I held a little seminar and as I asked around my friends in the in the business, uh, that was that was pretty common that family and friends want to get into Bitcoin. They want to know how this works. You're seeing it on the front pages of you know, major media publications and major financial publications. Of course, people are going to be getting interested in it now. For sure. So why would you uh, want to use BitGo or multi-signature today? What does it really give you? So we're, we're modeling our, our company after some of the renowned financial institutions like Charles Schwab or Fidelity or Vanguard. Really, you're, you're coming there. That's where you're managing your portfolio of investment. And so when you log into BitGo, 
uh, you're able to create a secure wallet where any funds you put in there are protected by this multi-signature technology uh, that, that Mike and his team have developed. But also, we're providing a suite of services on top of that. So if you're holding Bitcoin, as I do, at many places, you, maybe with BitGo, an exchange, uh, maybe cold storage, other places, you want to have a sense of what your portfolio is worth and if anything is happening in your portfolio. So we are constantly monitoring the blockchain. We're constantly monitoring your other accounts. And we're able to give you visibility into your broad portfolio. So as a consumer, when I go to, or as an investor, when I go to Charles Schwab or Fidelity, I also add my other investments to that portfolio so I can see it in one stop shop. And on top of that, there are other types of services that can stem from owning Bitcoin in a secure place. So you can gift Bitcoin to somebody. With multi-signature, you can send Bitcoin via email and not worry that it's going to get lost somewhere in the blockchain because if they don't claim it, you still hold two keys and you can bring the money back to your own area. So let me, let me dig into the business side as well. Uh, a business that's starting to accept Bitcoin today is going to build a balance of Bitcoin. So when you're holding tens of millions of dollars in Bitcoin, you want to think about how to protect that from a rogue employee or even an executive stealing that money uh, or losing that money. And so just like banks do, we're building bank grade security in and around the corporate governance of a company, requiring two signatures when uh, someone is spending more than a certain limit, um, understanding where that Bitcoin is stored and how it can be spent by different officers or different employees within the company. So these are the applications that we see are just really the kernel and the, the starting point of where BitGo is. So if you're a consumer or you're a business, you should come to BitGo and start using us as your primary uh, one-stop shop for Bitcoin, even if you are trading at other exchanges or buying Bitcoin through other places. The multi-signature technology is really the key. So if someone wants to get started using BitGo, um, what, are the, what steps do they need to take? So when you, when you create your account the first time, it's really easy. It's almost as easy as creating any other account. Um, actually, I guess I should say it's as easy as creating any other account. It takes just a few seconds. You, know, you sign up with a website and so forth. Um, now, the, the BitGo application is different from other web wallets in that half of the application resides in our server. The other half resides in the client. And so we will very seamlessly, it takes about 30 seconds, you know, create a couple of keys that you're going to create. Um, we'll provide backups for you. You can either encrypt it and store it on your hard disk, have it emailed to you in encrypted form. You can print it out in unencrypted form. Uh, those are your backups. Those are what you have. If BitGo ever goes away, if anything ever um, happens where you forget your password or anything like that, you always have those keys. And that's all you need to be able to get back to your Bitcoin. Um, the third key is created on the BitGo service side. And that's what allows us to help you with your transactions. So we can do things like velocity limits, as Will mentioned. We can also do some of the services that have previously been reserved only to like Visa and MasterCard. So if you're living here in the Bay Area and suddenly a transaction comes up from Germany, Visa knows that, hey, maybe we shouldn't, we shouldn't make that transaction happen. And so we can do those same types of things because we're the service side that's providing that last signature. Um, typically for you. So the account creation process is really easy. You get two keys, we get one. One of your keys, you just print it out and you save it forever. You never have to look at it again under normal circumstances. The other one you use with your daily transactions. I think historically when you look at it, you've had in the Bitcoin space in 2013 and before, you've had uh, hosted wallets that are really good for accessibility and getting to your funds from a mobile device or other places. And then you've had really secure storage like cold storage. And there's nothing has really met the two of those together, right? The hosted wallets have the risk of one single point of attack with a single key. And the cold storage is hard to get that out. You have to go through some kind of process to open up your vault and get that cold storage key out there. So BitGo is actually bringing those two together. We're providing cold storage-esque security, bank grade security, while it's very accessible from any device and it's completely hosted. The only thing that we're holding on to is a single key. So we don't even have sufficient information to access your funds. Instead, we're really acting as a co-signer on all the transactions because we know that you are you when you're asking to send Bitcoin from your account to somewhere else. So one thing that I really like about Bitcoin is you see a lot of people really working together to kind of advance the whole technology. And a lot of these things actually carry over beyond Bitcoin as well. If you develop multi-sig for Bitcoin, it'll carry over other altcoins as well. And I'm curious if you're open sourcing any of your technology or any of your thoughts on the cooperative work in, in Bitcoin? Absolutely. Almost all, this, all the work we're doing is, is open sourced. And uh, we've leveraged, we've been lucky to stand on the shoulders of giants that have built great stuff. Um, our recovery tools are all open source. Uh, we've contributed back Bitcoin J, JS Lib. So we'll continue to do that going forward. 
Well. And I think also we are, when you look at it, if you go to bitgo.com, you can actually read Mike's white paper about the P2SH BIP, BIP16 technology that he built uh, the, that, on that protocol that he built the multi-signature wallet. So we're not concealing what we're doing. We're actually saying, this is our security protocol. This is how it works. Read it, get familiar with it, trust it, because it's going to keep you secure. And I think that's a really powerful statement in the ecosystem to say, we're not hiding anything. This is how we're operating. We're a technology company with a security protocol, and we're therefore building the most secure because it's very transparent and a lot of it's open sourced. So um, as a media guy, uh, what, what has been your experience and your impression of, uh, of the media covering Bitcoin over the last few years and the changes that we've seen? Yeah, so I, I'm, I, it's, it's funny. I'm not a traditional media guy by any stretch, which gave me, I guess, the opportunity to just do it the way I wanted and write, write my own playbook. Um, I saw a big gap in between the, you know, the Bitcoin forums and the once in a while articles in Wall Street Journal. And there was really no place to go to say, what is Bitcoin? What's happening on a daily basis? And what's the voice of the entrepreneur? Where's the entrepreneur getting a voice to be able to tell their story? And so that's why I created that, that property on Bitcoin to be able to help the ecosystem in that way. And, and what I saw is that there were a lot of other people with the same idea. There's Let's Talk Bitcoin, Coindesk. There's a variety of other publications that came up at the same time to try to fill that void. And, and it's been great for the industry because it's giving uh, a credible voice, but a consistent voice uh, in and around uh, what these companies are doing. I also think, and this is a position that we take as a company, it's really important for founders to speak to their customer base in a public, open setting. So we're blogging, uh, we are, we're publishing white papers about our technology, we're doing a lot of things, we're speaking, Mike, speak, Mike and I are each speaking at, at Bitcoin meetups, we're, we're getting up and talking about what we're doing, um, because that's actually part of the media fabric as well. It's not just what the Wall Street Journal has to say, it's what the, down, the entrepreneur at the, in the ground, you know, at the trenches has to say. So that's great. Will? Thanks, Jerry. Mike, Thank thanks for coming on the show. For more information regarding BitGo and anything else we talked about on Money and Tech today, check out moneyandtech.com.